Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram and today is another episode of my weekly challenge, M's Scrap Busters. And we are using those scraps that we have in our stash, um, those little off cuts and little pieces that we have left over uh, instead of throwing away. We are using up those scraps and today we're making a stacked pocket belly band. So here is my prototype I have made. My little pieces back behind it in my half sheet journal. So this is eight and a half tall. And the way we are putting on the pockets, um, if you have a shorter journal, you can always cut off some of the top and the bottom and you can still use these in shorter journals but we're just going to make eight and a half by eleven tall belly bands today and if you need to change up the measurements you can go for it um, these have three pockets so we have one pocket here one here and one here so we have three pockets they're stacked on top of each other and they don't have that much of a, you know, they don't stand up too much on your page either, as you can see there. So we don't have to worry about it being too bulky or something. And I just love how these come together. And I also love that they're all made from scraps from my pile. So I'm starting with a two inch wide piece of um, cardstock, scrapbook paper, whatever you have. Um, it needs to be a little bit thicker than like, you know, regular copy paper though, because you're going to be sliding things in and out behind it and it needs to be sturdy. So if you do um, just one sheet of paper, you might want to fold it, glue that together just so you can have like a double layer uh, thickness. I think I will just go with this piece of chocolate brown cardstock that I had in my stash. It's just a cut off of a 12 by 12, as you can see. Um, I have more of that same um, paper there over here, but I don't have a lot of long scraps that are printed. Um, I have this one but the writing would go sideways. Ooh, but I could do that side. Look at that side. I like that. Let's do that. If we have time, we'll get to the um, chocolate brown solid cardstock too. All right, so we're going to cut this down. And I need my big cutter. We're going to cut this down to eight and a half tall. Okay, so eight and a half is there. Got another piece for my scrap pile. And then we're going to cut this at two inches wide. So there is my base for my belly band. Now we're going to find some pieces to make our pockets out of. And you will just need pieces that are um, two and a half inches wide or wider. And then um, we're going to have it two and a half tall also. So two and a half by two and a half. So if you've got some of those pieces of scrap, go ahead and get them out. So we're going to cut this at two and a half inches wide by two and a half inches tall. So that's almost right at it. Just barely had to take a piece off. Okay, so there's one. And let's do a colorful one. Let's do this. That's so pretty. I really like that. Cut it at I want this end. Two and a half. So our pockets, easy, easy measurement, two and a half inches by two and a half inches. Two and a half by two and a half. OK, 
Okay, so there's two. I need one more. Let's do... Let's do a solid one in between those. Okay, let's do two and a half again. And then two and a half this way. Okay, so we've got our eight and a half by two inch wide belly band base. And then we have three pieces of cardstock cut two and a half by two and a half. Now you need a scoring tool, however you score your papers. And I'm going to get a stylist. And I'm going to score these on two sides at the quarter inch mark. So just the one fourth or quarter inch. And then I flip it around just to make sure that all of my measurements are good. So I've got, i show you on the colorful ones better probably. You can see that. I've got the two score lines quarter inch on each side. Now if you're using directional paper, make sure to do your score lines because this is a square piece of scrap now. So make sure to do your score lines so the directions go in the right way. I got this polka dot paper. And I found that cardstock um, works a little better on these than any kind of flimsy paper because you are having to um, fold the um, pockets back and forth on the sides so you want it to be pretty sturdy all right so we're going to just fold over those little quarter inch score lines and then we're going to have some fun with these pockets before we actually attach them on. Um, you can of course just do your little circle punch and make your notch at the top if you want to. Not a problem. Um, I did it just a little bit more fun and I tore the tops. So I'm going to flip this pink cardstock over because it's textured on that side and I like that texture so I want that to show on the outside instead of the smooth side. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, fold this up back out and um, figure out which side is your top if you've got a pattern going on. Okay, so what I did was just barely got top here and did just a little bit of tearing across the top. Okay, I'm going to do that on all three. I just like this look a little bit better on these little bitty pockets instead of a big pull with a half circle punch. Ooh, I'm going against the grain on this one, so it's a little bit tougher to tear. All right, then you're going to fold these flaps back. And if you can see any of the flap that's turned um, back behind, you want to, you know, rip that off. This one, I can just see it barely, just a little bit. So I'm going to rip that little corner off so I can't see that when I folded it back. And I think that one's good. All right. Now I'm going to ink the tops of my pockets. And then I'm going to fold that in and ink that fold. Okay. You don't need to ink the bottom because it's not going to be seen except for 
the last one here and I even covered it over with some scrap paper at the bottom so you couldn't even see the bottom of it either. I loved coming up with this idea and the pocket widths and how they fit on there. Um, I like when I can give y'all uh, a template or me exact measurements. You know, most of the time when I do my scrap um, buster series, my challenge each week, it's just willy nilly and go for it, and <laughs> there are no measurements. Uh, this one actually has measurements for it to work correctly, and um, I liked coming up with this. All right, I am going to have to rip this just a little bit more. Just so it doesn't show. There we go. That's better. All right. Now you want to figure out um, which you want where. I want this one to be at the top or the one that shows the most here. Okay. So not really the top. It needs to be at the bottom but on top of all three. So that's the way I want my pockets to line up. I'm going to move this up so I can get it all of that in frame. That's how I want those to line up. Now I'm going to lay them down, press them down pretty good, and figure out where I need them to line up. So I look at that. I've got more at the bottom than I do at the top, so I want to pull all three down just a little bit and then figure out is that about in the middle and it is so what I'm going to do so that I can make sure of pocket placement I'm going to make myself a little pencil line there's my pencil line for where this one the bottom of this one needs to be here's my pencil line for where the bottom of that one needs to be and then pencil line for that one the top one so that helps me to figure out where I need my pockets lined up before I adhere them. I'm using, on my gussets that we've made here, I'm using some double-sided tape. It just happens to be score tape. And this is the eighth inch score tape. It just works well for me. Whoops, right before we do that, right before we do score tape or double-sided tape or liquid glue, whatever you're going to use. Here is the top of your pocket. Here are your gussets. You're going to trim your gusset just like that at an angle. So come to the fold line at an angle just like that at the bottoms. This one would probably be easier to show you. Okay, so we're just going to go at a slight angle to that fold, that score line. That's all we're doing. I'm going to turn it like this. And that's just going to get rid of some of that bulk at the bottom when we start to stack these on top of each other. So you'll need to do this so it's not bulky. Okay. I've got some of my dullest scissors ever. I need to sharpen them. Okay, so I just cut out the little notch on the bottoms. And now I'm going to go through, <coughs> excuse me, and put double sided tape on the gusset. So the folded over part. So you're not putting it on the back side of the pocket. You are folding this gusset over and you're putting your tape or glue or whatever on this side. Um, if you want to leave it out like this, you can. Just make sure not to go over your folded line. And that's why I also like to ink that folded line so I know not to go over it. That helps me too, and it helps to give you some dimension and a finished look to your projects I think anyway so I'm just putting it on the gusset not going over my fold line if you want to do glue you can I am just not um, I will use the word adequate 
<laughs> with liquid glue. I tend to drive it all over the place and then it gets all over the place and gets where I don't need it to be. And then I have been known to close up a pocket before using liquid glue and I don't want to do that. Now we are going to use just a tad bit of liquid glue at the bottoms of these. I know that some are looking at these pockets and going, okay, Melina, you made a gusset for the sides, but not a gusset for the bottom. Yep, we don't need the gussets for this project because it's going to make them too bulky when stacked on top of each other. So you do not need that bottom gusset on these pockets. I promise you they work brilliantly without the bottom gusset. That was just a way for me to keep bulk out. Okay, so I'm going to fold those gussets back, find my pencil mark for my first pocket to go down, and then I'm just going to line it up, stick it down. Now, if you have a fine tip glue, liquid glue, I should have done this before I laid it down. You just need a little bit at the bottom of that pocket. Now, well, I can't find my messy rag. Alright, now I'm going to do it the correct way the easy way on the next two pockets. I laid that down before putting my liquid glue at the bottom of it. Okay, so I'm taking off my backing on my double-sided tape. I'm folding my gussets over. That's the top. So at the bottom, I'm going to put a dab of liquid glue under my little gussets at the bottom. And then just a tiny little line of liquid glue at the bottom of it. Okay. Then I'm going to line up, not with this pocket, I'm going to line up with my little pencil mark that I made earlier and line my next pocket up. And then press down on those gussets and then press down on the bottom where you have that little tiny bit of liquid glue. Then third pocket. Taking my backing off of my double sided tape, folding my gussets over, that's my top. So I'm gonna put a dot of glue under each gusset and then a tiny little line of glue at the bottom and then line it up with my pencil mark and then press down on the bottom where that liquid glue is and you've got the main part base of your stacked pocket belly band now you will decorate how you want to, decorate your pockets up how you want to, um, with, with scraps is just a wonderful way to do that. Let me take out the stuff that I have in each one of these pockets so that you can see my decoration. So at the top I did just one of those washi stickers and this is just a die cut piece of little books that I glued on there. Then some book page that I inked and some scrapbook paper that I just ripped with a little butterfly on there. And then at the bottom of this pocket, I just placed two pieces of Tim Holtz scrap that I had and inked that and put that at the bottom. So that's how I decorated my uh, pockets. And then it's just a folded piece of cardstock, another folded piece of cardstock. You could make little tickets and little tags to go in these. This come from the Tim Holtz Salvage Tags uh, ephemera set and then that's just a folded piece of uh, coffee dyed paper and just put down in there. So that's how I filled up 
my pockets on my belly band. So easy, right? We'll come back, once this is dry, we'll come back and decorate that one. Let's go ahead and make one more, just so I can go through it with you one more time. And then we'll decorate these things. Uh, I keep reaching for my little trimmer when I need my big one. Hardly ever have to put the arm out on this, so... I forget when I'm doing longer projects. I have to do the arm out. All right, eight and a half by two inches. That's the base of our belly band. Now on this one, if you had a journal that was seven inches tall, the page was seven inches tall, you would just cut off on top and bottom and you could still use this belly band. Okay, eight and a half by two, and then I want to use this pretty paper on this one, and I want to use this music paper on this one, and then what other one do I want to use? Yeah, let's go with this word paper. Okay, so I need to cut these two and a half by two and a half. So two and a half inches wide by two and a half inches tall. Same thing. Two and a half. Oop, I need to cut off that one. That side, don't I? By two and a half. And then two and a half by two and a half. And there's my three pockets. Need to get my score pile up here. Okay, directional paper and butterflies flying up that way, so I need to score it this way on my sides and then music paper and words make sure of which which way they are going before you score your square piece okay and then quarter inch score on two sides Then you're making your um, top pull the notch, however you would want to make it. Um, like I said, I just tore mine because I like that look. I like how um, torn paper looks when it is distress inked at the top. And I did that on all of these. And I just like the torn look. So I'm going to do that yet again. If you wanted to make a traditional notch, all you would do is put your circle punch in the middle of your little pocket. And you might would want to even use the smaller circle punch and do your little notch in the middle. That's all you have to do. Your pockets would be just a tad taller than mine because we are tearing off the tops of ours this way but um, if you wanted to do that that would work all right I think I have forgotten to or I cut this one a little long didn't I <laughs> I think I cut this one at the two and three quarters that I did I thought that sure does not look square to me now let's make sure that all of them line up they do now okay so I'm going to find the top and tear then we will ink I'm using the um, walnut stain oxide ink okay I'm folding back to make sure that 
my gussets are not showing in the front and it's not it might on this one we need to check that okay yep it's showing just a little bit on this one there we go and now last one you're just going to see the ink really at the top on this one where that white core was showing after I tore it okay and see this one the gusset's really showing so I've got to tear at a downward angle okay then I'm going to get my sharp scissors and I'm gonna cut my little notch my little triangle out of the bottoms and you are cutting down at an angle toward that score line down at an angle and remember that's just to get that um, girth out of it um, that bulk out of it get all my little bitty bits out of here now I've got a lot of pattern going on in this one um, I wanted to do that just because the background the base is so plain so I'm thinking this way let's try it this way though see if I like it better stacked like this yep I do I like that darker in the middle so we're going to do a music paper at the top our script paper in the middle and our green butterfly paper and then you're going to space them out because you want your pockets to be seen and then I need to pull them all down some because they're too high when I get in the middle so I need to come down quite a bit don't I? there we go that's more toward the middle right there okay so I've got my pencil here I'm gonna make my lines whoops look at there what I did I'm gonna make my lines I think I need to pull that middle one up just a little bit there we go that's better and we're still in the middle pretty much yep okay I'm gonna make my bottom pencil mark middle pencil mark top pencil mark put on my double-sided tape onto the gussets and this eight inch score tape can be a rascal to hold on to and this one was because the middle um, cardboard circle of this score tape has already come out and it was because I was wrestling with it at some point so this one is being very as my one of my grandmothers used to say cantankerous and I guess that really just means hard to deal with <laughs> uh, she loved using that cantankerous you're just being cantankerous all right this one is going to be the one that goes at the top so I'm going to take my backings off and then I'm going to remember to put my liquid glue at the bottom of this one before I put it on there okay little bit of glue back behind this bottom gusset just a little dot and then do a little drive of glue across the bottom find your top pencil mark line it up and then press down the bottom okay and then the next one 
take off my backs. And then a little bit of liquid glue under each of those gussets and then a little line all the way across the bottom. Got it on the front. And then line it up where my pencil mark is and press down and be sure to press down really good on the bottom and before you add your next pocket make sure that you don't have any um, glue just kind of glob down here because when you put that other pocket on it's going to catch and then you're not going to be able to get things down in there that's why I'm not that big of a lover of liquid glue when I'm using or making pockets and adhering pockets because liquid glue just doesn't like me when I'm adding on a pocket. It tends to glop and gloop and go everywhere. So there in the corners and then all the way down. Okay. And then line up on our last pencil mark. And then press down that bottom. Okay. So there is our brown, chocolate brown base with the three pockets. This one should be dry by now. Um, just to show you how things are going to go in there. Look how easily that glides down in there. Now, if we were not to have put on the gussets on the sides you would have very little room to put anything down in these pockets because i mean the pocket itself is only two inches wide so if you were to have just put liquid glue down without a gusset on a two inch wide piece of paper and put it down then you've just barely got like an inch to put something down in it so that's why I love the gussets on this project. This would be very cute in that pocket. Look at that. These came from that same uh, Tim Holtz ticket ephemera set. So see, there's a very wide ticket going down in that one all the way down, all the way across because we used um, gussets. And I just think that is like the cutest thing ever. I love these little tickets from that Tim Holtz collection. Now, your ticket is going really tall here. So if you did a um, shorter journal, shorter page that you're going to put it on, of course, you would need to have a shorter piece of something go in this top pocket. Um, and then if you want to, you can decorate the pockets. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to. It's your journal, remember? You do it how you want to. But down here would be a cute um, phrase sticker or something right down here with some kind of little die cut. So let's find a few things to put on these pockets and at the bottom. We could always just use more scrap like I did on this one. Let me pull this one over so you can see it again. It's just got a bunch of scrap decorating it with a little washi sticker there at the back. And I'm going to clip off just a touch of this ticket on each side. Just a little bitty piece trimmed off because it's exactly two inches wide and I want a little bit of a mat going there. Yep, I like that little ticket on that one and we could put a little phrase of some kind at the top. You know what? I really like it like that. So ink up this ticket and then put this butterfly 
right there. And I know that there is a yellow butterf butterfly right there, but I really like how that looks. And then I think I will put this hopeful at the top here. That is cute. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm not going to ink this. I will ink my base of my belly band in just a minute. I'm going to get this centered up as much as I can anyway. That looks about right. Okay, let's ink up this ticket. Just barely ink the edges of it. And then this butterfly. Just barely get a little bit of ink on the edges. And press down our ticket. At the very bottom, this is going in a half sheet journal, so I'm good. I don't have to cut off any. You could just make up a bunch of these and just put the pockets on them and put them in your ephemera pile. And when you need a piece to go in or a belly band to go in your journal, you can cut off what you need off the top and the bottom and decorate it then to go along with your journal. So you could make up a bunch of these just as bases. That would be awesome. Okay, line up that pretty yellow butterfly. I love that. Okay, and then if we wanted to put on some kind of little something on these pockets, how about a piece of torn paper that's got some writing or numbers on it. Could do it like that up against the edge. I like that. It's ink. What we'll be able to see anyway. Do a little bit of glue. A little bit on that side too, Melina, so it doesn't go anywhere. And then line that up. Oh, that's cute. Okay. And let's see what else we got in our scrap pile here. Oh, I have these little squares that I had punched out from a different um, scrap buster. I like that. That little clock kind of peeking out right there. That's pretty. And it's got some mustard color that goes along with our yellow. I like that. Let's use that. Oh, I like that little torn piece. Let's do that and the little clock there. And if I've got another little butterfly that I can cut out. Ooh, what about this? Just tear along the edges of that little butterfly. And then go along the edges on top. Have it kind of dipping down in there. I like that. Let's move this to here and that butterfly there. How does that look? Oh, I like that a little bit better. Okay. I'm going to go around, since we've got torn look going on this, I'm going to go around the top of that clock and ink the top and go ahead and glue that in there. Oh, I like that. Okay, and ink my butterfly and my other little piece here. Just the part that you can see. A little bit of glue. Try not to get too much glue because you don't want it to close up your pocket. And then another little tiny bit of glue. And have this one dipping down like this. I like that. Okay, let's ink the base. And I like going a little deep in the corners when I have a long piece like this. 
just helps it out a little bit. All right, and then ink the bottom, and then I'll go back up there too. That is cute. I love that. So now I will add in that little ticket and this one up top here. It almost needs a little shorter one so you can see the hopeful word, doesn't it? You can still see it. And then maybe this one in here. That one's a little tall for that, ain't it? Let's do this one. Yep. And then when you take out the little tickets, you have a little surprise back there because you've decorated it up. That is cute. Now, when you add this to your journal page, all you're going to do is put glue or double-sided tape at the top and the bottom. That's all I did on this one. Was I put um, a couple of pieces of double-sided tape at the top and the bottom and just adhered it onto my page. That is all there is to these stacked pocket belly bands. So on this one, I just got a little ticket piece of ephemera or die cut. And then I put embrace, yep, embrace the journey from the Tim Holtz. I think that's small talk. Anyway, I wanted to show y'all like on this one, how I put that washi sticker at the top of that one. I'm not really going to do any decorating on these pockets because they're already so pretty. Um, but I wanted to put a little washi sticker at the top of this one just to show you how I put it on. Oh yeah, that one will work. Won't it? Oh yeah, that one will be pretty, very pretty. Almost perfect. Okay, so on these washi stickers, they're kind of vellum like because they're frosty so they're not completely transparent and they have this little acetate backing and the only way I have found for them to really release is to fold them and then they release from that backing there it comes maybe in a moment there we go. <laughs> uh, so that is how I added on that washi sticker. And I just kind of put it down in the pocket. And then placed it where I wanted it to go. So it wasn't hanging off the top. I love that. So even when you do put something in the pocket... You'll still be able to see a little bit of it. It's just according to how tall the item is that you put in the pocket, huh? So on that one here, it was just a coffee dyed piece of paper. I was looking for a long one to show you how I did the full piece. I might not have another long piece of coffee dyed paper in here. Uh, let's do it with this one. I'll show you how I folded that up. Just little folds. And then you keep going until you get to the top. And then you have this little lip here and you fold it over so it kind of looks like a little envelope that you can put down into your pocket. And for this one, it's plain, so it's all you have all of that space for writing if you want to, or drawing, or whatever. So there's how I did that little piece. And then on these other ones, it's just, it's not even um, tickets or anything. It's just folded up piece of scrapbook paper, like this one. Take that off the top and make sure that we've got less than two inches okay and I'm going to fold it up and let's make sure that this fits when I have to cut it just a little bit 
skinnier. Nope, it fits. Look at that. I like when the flat part is up top with those gussets that fit so good. I love that. Love it. And then another piece to go in that top pocket. And then another little ticket piece. And that one could even go here where that green is. We could put that folded up paper there at the top. I like that. So cute little way to store some small ephemera that you have uh, that you want to go in your journal. So that's an easy way to do that and keep it all stored away and in a belly band. And then the belly band has another uh, use for it also. I love that. And thank you for giving to my Buy Me A Coffee website. I was able to reach my goal of, um, I think it was $150. Um, I had just um, done that goal a couple of months ago. And I reached and surpassed that goal from y'all's donations. And that was to buy me a new um, audio uh, microphone for recording my YouTube videos. And I have ordered it. It should be here tomorrow. I'm so excited. So maybe in next week's uh, videos, maybe. I don't know. We'll see how I... <laughs> How I can get it set up, how fast I can get it set up. But I did get me a boom type microphone um, for my videos, and I'm hoping that that helps a little bit with my audio. Um, not that I've had anybody complain about it really, but um, I just know that I'm only using the microphone that's built into my camera that's up above me. So maybe if I could have a mic a little closer to my mouth that might would help the audio on my videos just a little bit. I hope that installation goes smoothly and that it helps me out with my audio on my videos. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it so much and thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. It helps me a lot in the YouTube algorithms. You don't even know how much. <laughs> that really, really does help me. So thank you so much for watching till the end. Y'all have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. God bless. Bye, y'all.